Luke 4, verse 16 to verse 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And he had opened, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. They, he did not open it randomly, he did not open it circumstantially. He opened it and found a place. He found. It means there was a place he was looking for. This was what was written where he found. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The full scope of the errand that the anointing that was upon Jesus was sent to accomplish was captured in the place where he found. It means that that scripture was about him. Now, the question I have for you is, have you found your own scripture? See, the Bible is a very prophetic book and it had anticipated your coming. It had so much capacity that it anticipated your arrival. And details about your arrival are captured in the scriptures. Just like Jesus was able to find himself in the scriptures, you are supposed to find yourself in the scriptures. And if you have not found yourself in the scriptures, you don't exist. <laughs> I know you are in Cape Coast. I know you are trying to get a certificate. But in the maze of God's eternal purpose, you're getting a certificate, even though it is very good, and I encourage you to get the first class. It has not added anything to the agenda of God. You can be a successful person and heaven is not aware of you. Heaven believes you ran away from the prison house of God's government. You are a wall. They are, they are looking for you in the desert, looking for you at Cape Coast. Because you are not available. Just like John the Baptist, I told you. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came. The way they sent him from the studio, that was how he came into time. But many of us, the way they sent you from the studio, when you arrived time, you changed. You became something else. So the angels are looking for you. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I have a connection with the depraved. And this poverty he spoke about is not, it is inclusive of financial poverty, but it, it, it goes way beyond it. Because he gives us a list of poverties subsequently. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The broken hearted is poor of tranquility. He has a poverty of tranquility. So he has ability to deal with it. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captive. His own poverty is in the area of liberty. Are you there? Recovering of sight to the blind. This one's poverty. So those are lists of different types of poverty. And as long as it is any form of poverty, for instance, Jesus has an anointing that has an errand to do damage to poverty. Have you found yourself in the scripture like Jesus? He took, he took, he said, he, he, he found where it was written. Next verse. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fasting upon him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So I am the fulfillment of this scripture. And the reason for which this scripture was written in the Bible. Is there a scripture that is in the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation that you can read and say this day? This day, this scripture is fulfilled. You know, I are you there? Because I need to show you my own so that you will know that this matter, I'm not just preaching at you, I'm trying to flog you. I have my own identity in scripture. Oh, okay, this is my own encounter. I was in serious fasting and serious prayer. Then I found myself in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 beginning from verse 9 and 10. That is me. He put forth his hand and touched my mouth. That's my story. That's what God did to me. Touch my mouth. And he said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Stop. You're about to go into that you're clapping again. <laughs> you need to understand the meaning of that. What does it mean? Does it mean that everything that I wanted you to say, I've given you, I've put it in your mouth so that you can be saying it. When I wanted to see it. Is that what? what no. He was telling Jeremiah that there was an impartation of the spirit of utterance upon him. The vocabulary that is required to carry the revelation, God will use him to speak. He received it by impartation, the impartation of the spirit of utterance. My, if my mom were here, she would have testified of my inability to speak. I was excellent in class, excellent. I will come out tops, but I can't talk. It was when I had this encounter. God did not only give me the ability to speak, but he gave me utterance. He, he gave me a set of vocabulary. 
Uh, you will not know that I don't study the dictionary for English. <laughs> oh, he gave me vocabulary, such vocabulary that has the capacity to carry the revelation he has called me to communicate. Uh, the moment I know what God wants to say, I don't look for the words. Because he put his words where? In my I have so much confidence in that, that grace of utterance, so much. It's when I teach on the book of Revelation that you will know that, yes, this man, they, they put something inside the words, the words to communicate the mind of God in simple plain language that Jesus would have done if he were physically present teaching us. He came to me by I don't want to take you to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 to explain that scripture more but then after he gave me all utterance he now said, see I have this day set thee over nations. This is where I discovered that I had an international ministry over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. Can you see that four of his activities were destructive? Only two were constructive. Can you see? You are not following me. You are not. Uh -huh. That's why. That's how my ministry is. When somebody comes and is beginning to build falsehood in the body of Christ, I can't sleep until I break it. I can't sleep because I'm called to do what? To root out, to pull down. To destroy some people try to attack me because that is physically because i scattered the falsehood they were building they died overnight because i was not doing it it was not me doing it. it's my calling I, the great one called me to do it who am i my calling empowers me to have that authority in the body of christ and that is the reason why i pay the price in terms of physical discipline to live right so that i can have the moral latitude to tell you that you that you are in sin that you are in darkness even now. Are you there? Now, so, 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 to pull down, to destroy, to throw down before we build and plant. So, I'm also a builder and planter, but I'm a destructive instrument. And I understand myself very well. And, and God told me that this kind of ministry, you are going to be persecuted. So, I'm at home with persecution. It's part of the what? The package. If you don't know the anointing you carry and the errand that the anointing is sent to accomplish, you will cry behind a cupboard. There is an unusual grace God gives me when men try to fight me. Oh, I become and not I grow. Because it is part of my calling. Who are you? Have you found your scripture? The scripture that reveals your identity. That's why you don't know your battles. That's why you don't understand your seasons. That's why you don't know your cycles. That's why you don't understand the ammunition that Satan is using against you because you don't know who you are. The people that came for John said, what do you say about yourself? Many people have said many things about you, but now, what are you saying about? Remember, Babylon wants to give you another identity so that you will live off a different perspective that is incongruous with your destiny in the kingdom of God. Are you there? So the anointing that you carry, the understanding of that anointing gives you an insight into your description in the kingdom of God. You must have heard me say this again and again. But if you want everybody on the street to like you, what do you do? Sell ice cream. Sell ice cream. Just go and look for ice cream and you, you blow the horn. Ooh! The whole place. But if you want to do ministry. <laughs> ah. I didn't choose this. I didn't choose this. The great one, he did. He made me a customs officer. So when people are trafficking with contraband, ah, you know, this is not of the kingdom. This is of darkness. Because many people have said, oh, this, this guy is just a troublesome. He likes trouble. It's, it is what is here that makes you like that. Jesus knew the errand of the anointing that was upon his life. Find your scripture. Find yourself in the Holy Book. There is a verse that speaks about you. There's a chain of scriptures that describes your manifestation. The Bible being a prophetic book anticipated your coming and your journey is captured in scriptures. The anointing that you carry is a description of your identity. Give me first Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 as I try to close that up and go to number 2 quickly. We don't have time to talk. So this is the anointing that was upon Paul. This is the ability of the anointing that was upon Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 he speaks about that anointing. But I would like us to begin the reading from verse number 6 before we move into 7. Can you go to 6? Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time whereunto 
I am ordained a preacher. So Apostle Paul had the anointing of a preacher. I am ordained an apostle. He had the anointing of apostleship to establish, to extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God, to extend the uh, coverage of God's reign and dominion. He had such authority rooted in the apostolic anointing that he had. He said, I speak the truth in Christ, I lie not a teacher. So Apostle Paul had the anointing of a preacher. What a preacher does is that he motivates people after righteousness. What a teacher does is that he grants people into the ideologies and the ideals of the kingdom of God. What the apostle does is that he opens new frontiers for the kingdom and brings the body of Christ into the new things and the new technologies that God is making available to the body. He was able to identify that the grace of a preacher, the grace of a teacher, and the grace of the apostle was upon his life. The difference between me and Apostle Paul is that Apostle Paul was first a preacher, leader, then an apostle, then a teacher. I am first a teacher, then an apostle before the preacher. So if any man serving God should be able to describe the texture of the ability, the grace that is at work on his life. It will give you an insight to know what God has not called you to do. So you will just fuck up in Jesus' Christ. Are you there? Those days when we were in the village, one man said he had an encounter with Jesus. And that Jesus told him that he was going to build a 30,000 city auditorium in a certain city. That is a revivalist of our generation. That heaven has endorsed him. Uh, do you know what? That his vision was only true in his diary. That was. <laughs> may, may the things God has spoken to you, may it not die in your diary. In the name of Jesus. I'm ordained a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher. I am ordained a teacher, an apostle, and a preacher. But what are you ordained? Or you, 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 it's only the poster and the handbill that knows that you are a prophet. But there is no deposit of the prophetic in your life. When you try to behave like a prophet, you lie to deceive the congregation. If there is something you are ordained, find it. Stop masquerading. Ministry is not that hard. God is the one that gives us the, the empowerment to do his will. God will not call you to serve his will and not give you what it takes to do so. If you decide to stand under a false identity, you will need to be doing it, stage management, until old age. I think it will, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, it's a great body. It's, it's a body, it's a body, it's a body. Find the, the, the anointing that is upon your life. To flow in the teaching anointing, it comes so easily to me. Like when I finished preaching this morning, I didn't know what I would preach this evening. I went to his presence and I stretched myself. And I would remain there until he comes. So he came to me and said, go this way. The moment he gives me the idea, what to say is not a problem. To build the architecture of the emphasis, he doesn't need to. He has already given me the software to develop that. Uh, it, 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 it depends on how many hours you are willing to stay here. That software can produce results, can produce. It's an ancient one, ancient software that was downloaded. Because I have grace to expound the counsel of God. I have grace to teach. And it is not by power. I'm not saying this to exalt myself. I am nothing without grace. If you see me without grace, the symptoms of stammering will come back and you will know there's nothing good in me to behold. Oh, one of those times we, I did something, the Holy Ghost was angry and he left. All the stammering he delivered me from. He, you don't want to see me like that. <laughs> so he showed me that he did not deliver me from the stammering. No. Any day I become stubborn. So because I know that I will end up stammering again, I, I decided to follow him. Ah! If you see, you know, you will never see me. Ah! Jesus. When you know who you are, then you can understand the workings of the anointing that is upon your life. You will flow in it. How many of you were in the service this morning? It was here I got that message. When they, those guys were doing like this, in the morning, it didn't drop. So, when they were doing that thing like, like this, and I was laughing, it was not because I was seeing them. I, I was something, the anointing was bringing something. When you study your, the anointing that is upon your life, it gives you an idea of who you are in the spirit. Number two, when you study the assignment that God has given you, it gives you an idea of who you are in the spirit. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. Galatians 2, verse 7. 7 and 8. Can you go to 7 uh, verse 5? Then we'll do 5, 6, 7, 8. Galatians 2, 5. To whom we 
give place by subjection. No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepted no man's person. For there who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. This is Paul speaking, that they went to a conference. They went for a conference. Are you there? So many people came somewhere, had titles, big titles. And the man is saying that the people that seem to be somewhat, the people that seem to be, have the loudest names. When they came for the conference, they discovered that what? They added nothing to him. This Paul. Uh, you see, when you begin to know who you are, you begin to discover that there are certain people that have the grace to be able to minister to you. That's when you begin to discover your clan, the language in your clan, the emphasis in your clan. You know, the body of Christ is vast, but you belong to a clan. When you hear the voice of your clan, you will know, oh, mm, I understand this language. It ministers to the core of my being. Paul went to conference and he said that the people that were what? Who seemed to be somewhat in conference, they added what? Nothing to me. Next verse. But contrarywise, when they saw in the same conference, are you there? That the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. You see, his anointing was in keeping with a certain strange assignment. He was the one that was designed by God as a technocrat that would take the gospel to the uncircumcised. And they saw that that was how his anointing was functioning. Because of the assignment that God gave him. And he, he now understood that uh, uh, Paul, Peter was the guy that had the anointing to reach out to the Jews. When they discovered this, what happened? For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostol apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. This was the workings of the anointing that he had. Next verse. And when James, Cephas, and John who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. They identified them according to their assignment and the effectual workings of the grace of God upon their life. Now, I, I, I'm praying that a day will come in the body of Christ where, where people will be accepted according to the description of the grace of God that is at work in them. You know, you know, you know, are you there? That level of knowledge needs to come into the body of Christ. That this is what Jehovah sent this man to do. We need to give him a right hand of fellowship in keeping with the grace and the stature that he has in the body of Christ. Today, we know men after the flesh. But Paul says henceforth, know we, no man after the flesh. Every man is supposed to be known in the crucible of his ordination, in the depth of the investment of God that is upon his life, so that we can accept them according to what God had made them. Your assignment is a description of your identity. So Paul knew that he was an ambassador to the Gentiles. He wasn't looking for pulpits in Jerusalem. He wasn't looking for pulpits in Judea. He knew that his place was in Assyria. In fact, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? Are you, do you know that Damascus, where he met with Jesus, was not in Jerusalem, was not in Israel, it was in Assyria. Even where God encountered him was not in in the land of Israel because his, his destiny was international. He was going to go beyond home to be a witness to people that had no knowledge of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was a different kind of training that he needed in order for him to be competent in that kind of mission. Today, all of us are cloned to be alike. Meanwhile, the anointing upon us is not alike. Oh my God, I pray your eyes will be open to understand what I'm saying this evening. Our strength in the body of Christ is tied to our diversity. But today, cloning is confused for covering. And people come out and they are not fully furnished. They don't have a grip on the handle of grace. And when they meet with Satan, they are no match. Territories conquer people, swallow people up. Mission fields swallow up people because they don't understand. They have not grown in the dexterity of the spiritual capital that God has made available to them. He said the pillars of the house of God identified him. And the pillars, there were three of them there. James, Peter, and John. They identified him. If we go further, because many people say that Paul didn't have a father in the Lord. If we go further, I will show you how that he submitted under Peter. Because this is uh, the scripture from whence people say they were colleagues. But that was not the case. I will show you, I will show you. 
but that's not the argument tonight just forget about it the pillars identify that paul had the grace that they did not have so they gave them the right hand of fellowship to go into their mission field because their identity was consistent with their anointing it, the anointing upon your life you can only understand it fully when you know the assignment it was designed to accomplish they gave us the right hand of fellowship and then did what that we should go unto the hidden and there unto the circumcision that is what we call meiosis you know we have mitosis and meiosis this is meiosis this is what we call cellular differentiation some people knew that the anointing they had was was designed for the jews and they were going to face that mission field squarely people like peter people like paul were released to the hidden he became the first apologist that could begin to preach the gospel by going to where their shrine he will see their gods and then see that okay this one has no labor he begins this argument from the unknown god because he couldn't quote the bible to those guys they had no reference point they did not believe in the authority of the bible this man was a philosopher and a scholar and he had to be that in order for him to preach to the greeks and Athens, the home of philosophy he fell to jesus because there was a man called apostle paul You see, there are fields that are vacant because the people that are supposed to operate there have not understood the anointing that they carry. I'm not called as a worship. When I this the other day, are you, do, you, do you know that I used to play? Yes. So I now discovered I would spend eight hours here playing reggae. And I was not excelling. I went to inquire of the Lord. Is this he, he said there's nothing like this? So I, I left it. Because I can't prosper. You don't understand it. Okay, take your guitar. Take your guitar. Let, let he, he will do something now. You, you, you can't just begin to do this kind of thing. There must be grace first before you come here. I was doing this type reggae. Pum, 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 pum. <laughs> hey, what's what that reggae song that we used to sing again? Um, ah, I've become older. Now, this is the reggae song in Nigeria. Give me, just strike your, your chord. Jesus is the answer. No, reggae, reggae. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no order. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. If you leave, if you leave, I will wait. The idea, I didn't say support me, don't support. So that was what I was doing. This type. What? May you not be in the wrong place in the name of you. If we allow her now, the Holy Ghost will seize the service. We, are, we don't want that dimension yet. Because these ones have the anointing for worship. They can compel God to come down. Yes. My own anointing is teaching. As I'm teaching, God comes down. That's the proof that he called me to teach. If you do what you are doing and God doesn't come down, stop. I'm going to ask God. Am I? No! A lot of us get... Okay, 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 okay. I was, I was doing play, playing keyboard. Then the symptoms of the stammering was still there. I was already in the university. Then Jesus now encountered me and said, I put my words. Recently, my pastor that I played keyboard for came and saw what God was doing with me and said, You? Are you the one? I don't know. How this happens. <laughs> His grace. And He blessed me. He blessed me. He blessed me. <sighs> because nobody knew that the keyboard boy would be an apostle to nations. You see, you don't look like you're calling. You don't look like it. The way you're looking, sister, the way you're, you're looking, you don't look like you're calling. The calling will reveal you in such a way that your mother has never identified you. Whether your name is known or your name is not known, that's not the reason why you're called. But there is a certain will of God that you're called to accomplish. And it will interest you to know that not all of us will be big preachers. Not all of us. Whether or not you're going to be a big preacher is already wired into your ministry DNA. Some will never be known because they'll be on the countryside. God will never allow them to move from Cape Coast to Accra to plant anything. 
and the shadows of Cape Coast, they will labor and labor and labor all through their lives. It is like that sometimes. You know, I need to say this to younger ministers that are looking for opportunities to become visible. If visibility is not what God is giving you, it will become the corruption that will destroy your soul. And we will need to even pray for you to make it to heaven. Who told you that I wanted to be visible in the world? Who told you? I, I saw people that were visible. How, if they make a mistake, the whole generation will never forgive them. I saw the danger of being visible and I did not desire it. I am here because it is part of my allotment in God. And I, I battled with God. I battled with God with so many questions. One of the questions was, okay, you called Saul, eh? Why, why did he, why was he corrupt? You wanted to establish his kingdom forever. That was your desire, but he couldn't live up to it. Why are you calling me? Can you guarantee that I will not end up like, yes, I prayed those prayers for years. For years. Visibility was not something I desired. Meanwhile, I was working in the oil in industry. I had money. I had enough money to build anything I wanted to build. But instead of building anything I wanted to build, we were building ministry. You need to see the ghettos that I stayed. A young pastor that claimed to be submitting to me took millions of money and went and rented the house. Then I called him. He said, come. I asked Philip to drive him to the houses I stayed, the ghettos. Then when he came back, I asked him, what, what are you looking for? It is obvious it's not ministry. Go away. When you want to do ministry, eh? you can come. But now you are a thief. You know what? I said the truth in the morning so that in the night you will not be confused. He was using Jesus as an opportunity to, to, you know, to live large. Meanwhile, I was given the opportunity to live large in the oil industry. I, I live like a villager so that we could push the kingdom of God. Today, God insisted that I will not... I must come into one light. I know how much I fought him. And we do it with utmost humidity. Checking our lives before his face every evening. So that our soul will not drift to places it should not go. Because I know the vanity of being visible. You, you are putting yourself everywhere. May God allow your soul to cross into light. It's like, it's like performance. It's like, it's like show business. It's like a reality TV show. That's what ministry is. You don't know the dread of God. So even though we preach well, we need, still need to go to Jesus in the night and say, I hope we're okay. Say well. And sometimes he will not speak until daybreak. Every day check so that your soul will not journey into vanity. And you will still think you are serving God. It's the old prophets that trained us. The ones that, served, that saw Jesus face to face. Those are the ones that trained us. And they told us what ministry was. We all ran away. After they told us, we ran away. It was God that haunted us. I said, you can't escape. Come. Because they told us it's, it's like dying. That you'll be giving sacrifice. Sacrifice is the fuel. That drives it. The day you stop sacrificing, everything will stop. I said, ah, I don't have that much to give up. I escaped. The great one haunted me in the night. For years. Then I told him that, okay, if I'm going to go for you, let me see you. That was the day the Holy Spirit allowed me to see him. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, you will know. I saw him. So now I cannot lie. I cannot deny that he's not true. I left my job when it was most lucrative to serve him because I saw him. I didn't come to look for money, to raise money. No. I am happy to suffer for him. If that will serve his will, we understand what ministry is. It's not about you. It's about God. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.